Top Gun Maverick is set to be 2022's biggest blockbuster, with an explosive opening weekend and ongoing box office success worldwide. Continuing the beloved story of its 80s predecessor, this film shows how a reboot sequel should be done. It has taken more than a decade to make and two turbulent pandemic years of pushed release dates for it finally to be out in cinemas, but I can say without a shadow of a doubt that it was worth the wait. But before I get further into reviewing this fantastic film, please consider subscribing and switching on notifications as it really supports our channel. And if if you are feeling generous, give us a like as well, as that tells YouTube that this video is worth showing to others. Let's begin with the plot, because there are plenty of reboots that do not take this critical part of the filmmaking process seriously at all. Producer David Ellison, who we have to thank for pushing the idea of this film into existence way back in 2010, talks about the production process in an interview with Bloomberg. He says Tom Cruise wouldn't start until they got the script right, saying that it's not like hitting a bullseye, but instead hitting a bullet with another bullet. This is a perfect analogy for the film, as in essence, both the original and reboot have very similar plot lines. In each film, there is only one bullet, i.e. one crucial mission that the Top Gun pilots need to achieve. There are not dozens of other little missions before the big ones, such as in the Fast and Furious franchise, which has increased in complexity over time, but added little emotional value, instead confusing its audience and really not doing service to the family themes. Yes, some time is dedicated at the start of this film to give Maverick reason to be back at Top Gun, but this was short and sweet, immediately throwing us into a plane with Tom Cruise, which was crucial to get the audience gripped from the start. Admittedly, the characters and their character arcs are pretty similar between the two films. Ice becomes Hangman, Maverick becomes Rooster, and their mistrust of each other is eventually resolved by the end of the film for very similar reasons as it was in the original. It's nice to see a more diverse cast in terms of the rest of the pilots compared to the original, and I think they all gave great supporting performances. I particularly enjoyed Monica Barbaro as Phoenix because she is a properly well-written female character who does not suffer the toxic traits of woke feminism. Her sex is not the thing that defines her, and her achievements are not glorified compared to the other pilots. In fact, Phoenix at one point says that they, as a team, are the best of the best. She's never trying to push an agenda that would distract from the main plot, whilst also remaining a great role model for young women who might be interested in becoming pilots. Of course, this film would be nothing without Tom Cruise, who is truly one of the greatest action heroes of the big screen. His two performances of this character, which span 30 years plus, are cohesive and beautifully performed. His character is now a teacher and a father figure, but Cruise never loses the essence of what makes Maverick Maverick. He's still handsome, reckless, brave, smart, and funny, but he's just older now. Cruz then adds this layer of trauma to the character, who's very much haunted by his past and the very real threat that his actions now could lead to the death of Rooster, the last remaining family member of Goose, the plane buddy that Maverick flew with who tragically died in the first Top Gun. Personally, I found it so much easier to connect and empathize with the Maverick in this film compared to the original, and I'm so glad that they took their time to develop this character authentically and accurately. He is the common factor between the two films, and his relationship with Rooster is where one bullet hits the other in the original analogy. The relationship they have feels incredibly genuine because of how it combines two types of relationships together. The first is between father figure and son, and we can see this when Maverick tries in vain to delay Rooster's 
application to join the Navy. The second one is between pilot and pilot, as when Maverick sees Rooster's determination and talent, he allows him to fly the mission. The scene between the two of them in the snowy forest after a whirlwind sequence of nail-biting action is perfect, it's beautifully written and showcases the core beliefs of both characters within a few sentences. And it's not only what is said in this film that has impact, but also what isn't said. Not once does Maverick tell Rooster that his father would be proud of him, but every time they talk or attempt to talk, the air is thick with this unspoken truth. The audience is telling Rooster that his dad would be proud of him in our own heads. We are proud of Rooster and we can sympathize with Maverick's journey. I think action is not often a genre that gets the care it deserves. If you capture the audience's attention with million dollar fight sequences, but then give them nothing emotionally, it's a wasted opportunity because we're already riding high on the adrenaline. We're primed to make an emotional connection, and Top Gun Maverick follows through. David Ellison cared, Tom Cruise cared, and it feels like every other member of the cast and crew very much cared about this film. After nailing the script, they delivered on every single other aspect to create a spectacle. The trivia behind both of these films is a rabbit hole that I would highly recommend falling into. For example, the cast had to undergo extensive flight training so that they could actually be in the planes when shooting the scenes. They had to switch on the cameras and redo takes by communicating with the actual pilots that they were flying with. But to be able to even do this, cinematographer Claudio Miranda had to develop a way to fit the necessary equipment inside the plane and stabilize the cameras to counteract the movement whilst flying. This is just a taste of the unprecedented feats of filmmaking that were achieved during the production of this film, and they continue to post-production, where Val Kilmer's voice was recreated using AI. With this type of ever-changing and fast-paced environment, the editing needed to be good, and I can say truly that this film is a masterclass in how to edit an action film. I was never confused about what was happening. I was never distracted by a weird cut. I was captivated. The edit marries together the picture, the sound, and the story in such a way as to make some incredibly tense scenes. The sound was designed and mixed perfectly to be loud, but not too loud, incredibly atmospheric, but never drowning out the dialogue. Some of the music of the original film was incorporated into the score in order to inspire some nostalgic feelings, such as the Danger Zone opening, but it never felt like they were banking solely on the nostalgia. Top Gun Maverick stands on its own stable and well-written feet. I am hoping and rooting for this film to do a clean Lord of the Rings sweep of the Oscars next year, as I truly believe it deserves to be recognized creatively, technically, all the lees. We do not need trilogies upon trilogies, endless sequels in which Bruce Willis is unhappily still dying hard, Vin Diesel is furiously gatekeeping who's allowed to be fast, and Neo, bless him, is reliving the same nightmare again, but this time stopping bullets with the enthusiasm of a sloth. We need more people to care about the action films they're making when they make them, especially in terms of reboots and sequels, because they run the risk of ruining wonderful characters wrapped in nostalgia by not spending enough time on the script. Top Gun Maverick and its predecessor are great examples of how incredibly moving a simple story about action heroes in real life situations can be for an audience, creating a steady balance between adrenaline fueled stunts and and emotion fueled character arcs. It showcases how modern technological advancements can be used to better tell a story, safely, realistically, and creatively. Thank you for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe and switch on notifications so you don't miss future videos, and comment below with your thoughts on the topic. Who's your favorite action hero? For more film content, feel free to follow us on Twitter, Letterboxd, and TikTok. Links in the description. Otherwise, this has been T-Break Film Reviews. My name's Michelle, and I hope you have a great day.